guys, so we're actually just chilling on the floor of my bedroom with a nice coffee and a nice big pile of books for a super casual, cheerful book haul to start off the month. Before we get into the books themselves, however, I would like to thank the sponsor of today's video, who are Shop Tagger. So I always love getting to combine Shop Tagger with a book haul because they just feel like they absolutely perfect sponsor for any video like this. ShopTagger, if you're not already aware, is a free browser add-on that you can download, install onto your browser, and it allows you to shop even more effectively when online. So some of the features of ShopTagger are that you can save items on various different websites. So say you're eyeing up a book in Blackwells, or on Wordery, or Book Depository, you can save that for later, and be alerted to whenever it is discounted, depending on how much of a discount you would like to hear about, whether it's any kind of discount, whether you're waiting for it to go on 50% off. And you can also organize all of the things you're interested in into different wish lists. So like I have a board game wish list, I have a book wish list, and I can keep an eye on all the prices for when I can get the best deal. But not only that, ShopTagger is also fantastic at alerting you to coupon codes when you're at the checkout online shopping. So you might be at the final stages only to discover that there's actually 10% off if you type in a certain code and ShopTagger will find that code for you, which is absolutely brilliant. I've definitely had some last minute saves that way. And not only all of that, but ShopTagger now offers cashback when you shop with certain retailers online. So honestly, it's just a magical addition to any of your online shopping. I couldn't recommend it more highly. I use it all the time. And like I said, I'm always grateful to them for sponsoring content on this channel. So if that sounds good to you, I will of course have ShopTagger linked in the description box down below. And and with that said, let's get into the books. So I thought I'd start off with the four books that I've bought myself and haven't shown you already. So the first one is Death in Her Hands by Otessa Moschweg. I picked this one up in Golden Hair, which is an independent bookshop based in Edinburgh that just has the most beautifully curated selection of books whenever you go in there. There's books I would expect to see, but also books that are a surprise and that I've never heard of before. And it's just a very aesthetically explaining, and it's just a very aesthetically pleasing shopping experience. Now I've read a, another book by this author in the past, I read Eileen, which was shortlisted or longlisted for the Man Booker Prize a couple years ago and that was such an interesting book because I didn't necessarily love it but the writing was incredible and it was an absolutely fascinating read but it left like a weird slightly sickly feeling in my stomach but that's kind of what it was going for I guess. So I've always been interested to read something else by her and this one just sounds so so intriguing. It is about um, a woman who's out on her daily dog walk and she finds a mysterious letter which reads, her name was Magda, nobody will ever know who killed her, it wasn't me, here is her dead body and of course she ends up embroiled in trying to solve the mystery of this um, dead woman. Where did this letter come from? Who wrote this letter? Why is she the one that's discovered it? And all the other like madness surrounding that. But like I said, I've read a book by this author in the past and I think it's going to be quite like beautiful and literary and eerie and maybe like a little bit unexpected in, in certain ways. So not just like a traditional thriller. And I'm really, really excited to give it a shot. I then have a book which I've been wanting to pick up for ages and I treated myself to this month and that's The Mythic Dream. Edited by Dominic Parisian and Nava Wolf. This is a anthology, so it's a collection of short stories by various different authors. So I recognise a lot of the names on the front cover here, some of whom I've read, some of whom I haven't. We've got Shona Maguire, Naomi Novik, Carmen Maria Machado, Anne Leckie, Rebecca Roarenhorst, uh, a whole bunch of others as well. And each story is a retelling of a myth. So it might be a Greek myth, a Roman myth, it might be a Native American myth, or a whole host of other different cultures and legends and mythologies. And I'm so, so, so intrigued by this because because that's a lot of like really popular, really well respected like SFF authors included here and you know I love myth retellings so when I saw this for the first time in Toppings Edinburgh, I'd never heard of it before, I knew I had to have a copy. We then have two books I picked up for myself in Waterstones because they were on buy one, get one, half price and they are both thrillers, one is YA, one is adult. So the adult thriller, I'm going to peel the sticker off actually, this is apparently a Waterstones exclusive edition, is The Turn of the Key by Ruth Ware. Ruth Ware is a pretty well known thriller writer and this has been pretty popular ever since its release. It's actually set in Scotland which I think is fun. I just looked at my window and it's pouring with rain so very Scottish. And it's about a nanny or a childminder who um, is responsible for these young children who end up dead in this smart house and she ends up getting accused of their murder but I think it's about piecing together what really happened. 
And did the smart house have some role to play in their deaths? And I think that sounds so interesting and I've heard like really good reviews for it. We then also have the YA thriller that I mentioned which is eight pieces of silver, I'm taking off this sticker too, by Patrice Lawrence. And this is about a girl whose sister goes missing. So her sister goes missing but her sister was quite reclusive. She um, didn't have a very close relationship with her sister. She was banned from ever entering her sister's room until obviously she goes missing and they're looking for clues as to what might have happened. So when she goes inside her sister's room she finds eight clues which is where the title comes from eight pieces of silver that may help her find out where her sister is what's happened to her sister whether her sister is still alive and I love YA mysteries I just think they're paced so well I find the characters are often incredibly endearing and this is one I've also heard great things about so I was really pleased when I saw these were both on buy one get on half price I then received some books as gifts before I move on to the books that were sent to me for review by publishers. So the first one was sent to me by a friend of mine which is Harrow Lake by Kat Ellis. This is another YA thriller so exactly the kind of thing I love and I just think this sounds so phenomenal. I'm going to read you the back. It says Lola knows all about Harrow Lake. Her famous father directed Night Jar, the cult horror film that was filmed there. She knows about the caves beneath the fairground, the sunken graveyard and the tree in the woods that's hung with teeth but she doesn't know about the dark past the town hides or the secrets it holds about her family. Now she finds herself in Harrow Lake and as she searches for answers, someone or something is stalking her every move. I have to read this book this month. This just sounds like an absolute October must read and I'm so excited for it. I was then very, very kindly gifted two books from my wish list and two books that I am so excited for one that I've been looking forward to reading for months and months and months and another which I've only added recently but cannot wait for and those are The City of Brass by S.A. Chakraborty and A Song of Wraith and Ruins by Roseanne A. Brown. So this one you might have seen a lot of buzz about on the internet of late. It's been getting a lot of really like incredible reviews. It sounds so wonderful. It is of course fantasy. I feel like you can tell from the cover. And it's about Malik for whom the Solstasia festival is a chance to escape his worn stricken home and start a new life with his sisters in the prosperous desert city of Zaran. But when a vengeful spirit abducts Malik's younger sister, Nadia, as payment enter the city, Malik strikes a fatal deal Kill Karina, Crown Princess of Zaran, in exchange for Nadia's freedom. But Karina has deadly aspirations of her own. Her court threatens mutiny, and Solstasia looms like a knife over her neck. Grief stricken, Karina decides to resurrect her mother through ancient magic, requiring the beating heart of a king, and she knows just how to obtain one by offering her hand in marriage to the victor of the Solstasia competition. When Malik rigs his way into the contest, he and Karina are set. He and Karina are set on the heart-pounding course to destroy each other, but as attraction flares between them and ancient evils stir, will they be able to see their tasks to the death? This just sounds absolutely brilliant, I'm so excited about that! And then another one that's been around for a little while, this one already has sequels out and available, but I've heard so many good things. Like this book has been recommended to me so many times, is of course City of Brass. This one says that in the markets of 18th century Cairo, thieves, tricksters, con artists and outcasts eke out a living, swindling rich nobles and foreign invaders alike. But alongside their new world, the old stories linger. Tales of gin and spirits, of cities hidden among the swirling sands of the desert, full of enchantment, desires and riches, where magic pours down every street, hanging in the air like dust. Many wish their lives could be filled with wonder, but not Nari. She knows the trades she's used to get by are just tricks and sleights of hand. There's nothing magical about her. She only wishes to one day leave Cairo, but as the saying goes, be careful what you wish for. It just sounds brilliant. Again, heard great things, and this was just such an incredibly generous, generous gift, so thank you so incredibly much. I cannot wait to read these. We then, like I mentioned, come to the largest portion of this book haul, which is books that were sent to me for review. I have quite a few and they all sound incredible so I'm really looking forward to sharing them with you. First up is one that you definitely won't be surprised to see in this book haul and that is Christopher Paolini's new book which is To Sleep in a Sea of Stars. So Christopher Paolini wrote The Inheritance Cycle which are the Aragon books and they're one of my favourite fantasy series of all time. I adore them and this is his newest novel. It's the first fictional work he's ever written set outside of Allegasia, which is the world of the Aragon books in the Inheritance Cycle, its first published one anyway, and it's actually science fiction instead of fantasy. Now it's also massive, like I don't read a ton of 900 plus page books to be perfectly honest, but given how much I love Aragon and all the books in that series and how long those books are, 
I'm so excited about this and actually how long it is because I feel like that means there's just so much more for me to enjoy given that I already trust this author invariably. Other than the fact that it's science fiction, I don't know too much about it. I'm going on the fact that I love the author but I believe it's about like a sort of futuristic intergalactic war between planets that um, may be the end of the earth and we follow one young human woman named Kira and all of the dark horrors and secrets of her own journey. So cannot, cannot wait. We then have another one that I'm super excited about and that is A Deadly Education by Naomi Novik. So I really enjoy Naomi Novik. She writes another one of actually my favourite dragon series which are the Temeraire or His Majesty's Dragons books. So obviously this has been um, a good month month for new books by dragon writers, although not dragon books because this is not a dragon book. <laughs> this is actually a bit of dark academia. I think it is dark ad academia with like fantastical, like supernatural twist to it, so it's not like the secret history necessarily, but, but it is set at an elite university. Love the end papers in this edition, it's just truly stunning. So we've got Enter School of Magic, unlike any you have ever encountered. There are no teachers, no holidays, friendships are purely strategic, and the odds of survival are never equal. Once you're inside there, there are only two ways out. You graduate, or you die. Honestly, like, who needs to know any more? That sounds superb. Love books at universities, particularly if there's magic, and I love Naomi Novik, so looking forward to this one. We then have a non-fiction book that was sent to me by One World, and this just sounds brilliant. I love the sound of it. I think the title in particular is really clever. I think it really draws you in. It's a fatal thing happened on the way to the forum. Murder in ancient Rome by Emma Southin. So, like I said, this is non-fiction all about, um, murder in ancient Rome, so I believe it's about sort of like the justice system in ancient Rome and how it deals with murder, but also potentially a few like incidents of murder that we have recorded in the sources. And as you know, I am an ancient historian, but I'm a Greek historian. I do though know a lot about ancient Greek law. That's one of my specialities, particularly in Athens, and I know a lot about homicide law in Athens. That's one of my things. But I don't really know the um, like parallels for Rome, so I think this is going to be really fascinating even though I'm not usually um, a big Roman historian. I think this will still be really interesting and I believe it's meant to be written in a very accessible way that anybody can read it. It's not like an academic text, although I'm sure it's very well researched and I just think it sounds absolutely fantastic. It's definitely tapping in on that fascination that we've all got with true crime these days, so looking forward to this as well. We then have two books from Vintage. So these are actually children's books, um, although they're not what they might look like, which is like picture books. They are quite text heavy, if I can show you inside. So they do have beautiful illustrations, but a lot of text. So they're for older children and, you know, adults like me. <laughs> and they're both retellings of classic fairy tales by like well-respected authors. So we have Blue Blood, um, which is a retelling of Blue Beard by Mallory Blackman. Um, these are from the Fairy Tale Revolution series, I should have said, and Duckling by Camilla Shamsey. So I've never actually read anything by Mallory Blackman to I'm sure many of your surprises, but I've obviously heard amazing things. And I love Camilla Shamsey. I loved Home Fire. I thought it was an absolutely fantastic retelling of an ancient Greek myth for a modern audience. So I'm really looking forward to seeing her tackle a fairy tale for children, but in quite a subversive manner, I imagine. I mean, they are called a fairy tale revolution series, and I'm also looking forward to reading this one because I think Blue Blood, because I think Bluebeard is actually one of my favourite fairy tales in terms of retellings. Like, I love reading retellings of Bluebeard. So I think these just sound stunning and look stunning, and I'm also really intrigued to see what comes out in the future in this series because it'll be really, really interesting to see what authors they have retelling different fairy tales. We then have another one perfect for this season and that is The Ghost Tree by Christina Henry. This was sent to me by Titan Books and it is a bit of a creepy, fantastical, paranormal horror novel. Allow me to demonstrate. This one is about Lauren and Miranda who have been best friends forever. Every day one would say, meet me by the old ghost tree, and they would go and have adventures. But now Miranda only likes boys and Lauren's father was found in the woods with his heart torn out and no one was ever caught. Escalated. A year later, the bodies of two girls are discovered. Lauren has a vision of a monster dragging human remains through the woods and she knows she can't keep doing nothing, not like the rest of her town. The foundation of her seemingly normal home is rotten to the centre. If nobody else stands for the missing, she will. 
I just think that sounds absolutely fantastic. I love like a fierce female protagonist out to sort of defeat some sort of monster creature that is um, attacking on women and mysteries surrounding um, dark past in a village. So yeah, absolutely here for this, hoping that it also makes its way onto my reading list for October. And in fact, for fairy tale revolutions, I actually have two books in another revolutionary series, which is the Revolutionary Women series. These are published by Gallic Books, which specialises in translated fiction, and this is a new series that they are um, bringing out, which are all classics by women, originally written in French, but translated into England. So French authors that you might not be familiar with, because they're not necessarily always included in the canon, but really like deserve to be read more widely. And I certainly haven't heard of or read either of these women before, so I'm super excited to be introduced to some more French literature that I haven't read before. One of the ones I have here is Three Rival Sisters by Marie-Louise Gagnure, and apparently this author was a French feminist writer um, from the late 19th century, and this is a piece of fiction about how both men and women were hurt by restricted I restrictive ideas about marriage. I think that sounds so interesting. The title story tells the tale of Henriette, Rene, and Gabrielle as they compete for the affections of one man, only to learn that marriage and happiness are not the same thing. So it looks like this one is actually collecting together there are two pieces of fiction and it has been translated by Anna Aitken and Polly McIntosh. And then next in that series we have The Women of the Wolf and Other Stories by Renee Vivian. This one is obviously a collection of short stories from the title. A woman rides crocodiles like horses, a queen gives up her throne for her dignity, and Prince Charming is not who you might think. So this is another collection in this instance from the early 20th century apparently which blends myth, fairy stories and biblical tales um, to create like powerful portraits of strong women who stand up for what they believe in and that sounds right up my street and it's translated by Carla J and Yvonne M. Klein so really looking forward to dipping my toes into these. We then have a book that I wasn't expecting in the post and honestly hadn't heard of but is now absolutely one of my most anticipated releases for 2021 and definitely sounds like one you should keep an eye out for because it sounds so intriguing and that's Mrs. Death, Mrs. Death by Selena Godin. So this book is all about Mrs. Death aka the wife of death, the wife of the Grim Reaper when the Grim Reaper or death goes missing and how she deals with that and honestly what a unique concept. I have only ever encountered in fiction before um, a fictionalised version of death and his family in Terry Pratchett but that instance death doesn't have a wife, he has a daughter that he adopts and this is obviously quite a different take and a very different tone I'm sure but I love that concept of like anthropomorphising death and like giving him a family and the idea that this isn't actually about death himself but about his wife just really really intrigues me and I'm really looking forward to picking it up. We then have Kingdom of the Wicked by Kerry Maniscalco, which is a new YA fantasy novel from Hodder and Stoughton. And it's about a young woman whose family owns a restaurant, but there's something a little bit magical about their cooking, I believe, until their restaurant is burnt down or there's an attack and I believe her sister is killed or taken and she gets dragged in to some dark um, magical underworld. So I'm really looking forward to this one, it's had a lot of buzz. This is obviously a proof copy, but this is obviously a proof copy, but the final cover is absolutely gorgeous and it comes out in October, so this month, perfect timing. I then have another fancy book, which is The Once and Future Queen, book one in the Secrets of the Starcross series by Clara O'Connor, which for starters sounds right up my street because it's set in Londinium. So Londinium was um, the ancient Roman settlement in England in what is now London and it's set in a world where the Roman Empire never fell. If Caesar still ruled London, I, mm. <laughs> okay, just gonna say it now, Caesar was never, if we're talking about Julius Caesar, he was never ever a Roman Empire. The Empire started after Julius Caesar. Um, I'm not gonna hold that against this book though uh, because it's an alternative history. So. In this instance, presumably Caesar lived and maybe did become emperor, so do you know what, I'm not going to question it. But the fact that it's set in a world inspired by antiquity is something I'm so here for, and I obviously love fantasy, and I believe it's also like a fantasy romance about star-crossed lovers, so, so here for that. Then, last but not least, we have Essex Girls by Sarah Perry. So Sarah Perry is probably best known for the Essex Serpent. She also wrote Melmoth. I haven't read the Essex Serpent, but I've read Melmoth and saw it, thought it was a really like good piece of literature. This, however, is actually non-fiction. It's for profane and opinionated women everywhere. So it's a little non-fiction book all about 
Essex girls. So Essex girls are disreputable, disrespectful and disobedient. They speak out of turn too loudly and too often, in an accent irritating to the ruling classes. Their bodies are hypersexualized and irredeemably vulgar. They are given to intricate and voluble squabbling. They do not apologize for any of this. And why should they? So I believe this book is dealing with like the intersections between like classism and sexism in the stereotype of the Essex women and also the way that society wants to control women's behavior and request that they behave a very specific way. So I think this sounds really interesting and it's super short so it should be a really quick read but those are all of the books that I have to haul for you in today's video. Quite a few but they all sound brilliant so I hope you have enjoyed this. Let me know if you have read any of these or would like to read any of these. We can chat about them in the comments down below. Thank you once again to Shop Tagger for sponsoring this video. It's always incredible to have their support on this channel. If you would like to check out Shop Tagger and download it for yourself, it will of course be linked in the description box down below. And until next time, happy reading. I'll see you all again soon. Bye everyone.